Welcome back to First Financial Bank on the South Loop in Stephenville. This is the Coach Misty Wilson Radio Show. I'm the voice of the Tarleton State Texans, Kelton Weens, and I'm joined now by Texan softball head coach Julie Mata. Welcome, Coach. It's great to have you Thank here today. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Uh, coach, have you ever done a radio show like this before? Uh, no, but I've been kidding around saying when we get a radio show, I want it to be somewhere where we have coffee and <laughs> lots of coffee. <laughs> Uh, Coach, first I want to talk about uh, your start to the season. You're six and one right now. There's way more than 40 games left in the season, but does this start signal good things for your uh, year to come? Oh yeah, our start definitely signals good things, but it has nothing to do with the W's. The W's are nice. I'm not going to say as a coach you don't, you're not happy to see them coming up, but um, it really just has to do with how we're playing and how we're learning. And um, you know, there's. We've got a, a, a very strong focus on the fact that there's only winning and learning right now. And so it's nice that we are getting the wins, but we're learning a whole lot and we'll be before. Coach, it, it, I may be totally wrong on this, but it seems like uh, softball is a sport that can really go either way uh, throughout, throughout the game. And uh, how do you possibly string together victories? How difficult is that to do? Uh, over the course of the season. Yeah, it certainly is. And I mean, we play this, the toughest, uh, by far, Division II softball conference in the nation. And um, what you have to remember is, is it's not about your size. And honestly, it's not about your talent. And the team that plays the best in the game is going to win. It has nothing to do with who's the most talented. Um, I feel like our talent can match up nicely with anybody we step on the field against. And we're going to step on the field against some really good opponents this weekend as well. Uh, but. It's a game, there is no perfection in this game. Well, it's rare, it's very rare. That's why you make such a big deal about it. In baseball and softball, when you see a perfect game being thrown, when you see somebody going four for four, um, then even then, you know, there's, there's not a lot of perfection. So you have to be mentally tough and you have to look at it from the lines of small victories and, you know, taking a step and if the next pitch is the one that matters and you, so what, next pitch, you know, if, you, if the one before it didn't go your way. Uh, you went to Commerce this year. You just came back from Commerce and for the first time ever at their place. Uh, playing new opponents is not really anything new, uh, but um, was it a little bit odd to uh, be on their brand new turf for the first time? Yeah, I, I mean, I found it odd playing on our official turf anyway. I mean, I'm, I'm a traditionalist, but, uh, you know, especially when it's blue, very Boise State, right. if you know what I mean, expecting Bucks to come, you know, just on at any time. But it was unusual, um, but, I mean, it's a beautiful complex, and now, you know, we've got, you know, upwards of four opponents that are playing on artificial turf, so it's something we have to get used to. Uh, we're going to be playing on artificial turf for all of our games this weekend over at WT um, for their tournament, and, uh, so we practiced out on our football field yesterday. <laughs> uh, Coach, uh, you mentioned that trip to the Canyon. It's the WT Woodward in Invitational. Um, a great park, great tournament in Canyon. Um, now those are big regional and region games for you. And, and how big are those this early in the year? Uh, it, yeah, they're very big. And, and, you know, there's not an unimportant game. And we don't have a bad opponent on our schedule. The games we played so far, we played some very salty opponents and, and opponents who could really hit the ball. Um, that's what we wanted, uh, especially with the young defense. You want to get them out there and, you know, trial by fire, so to speak. And this weekend, uh, you know, these opponents from the RMAC, uh, they're having some, you know, they had very strong years last year. Um, even, you know, Chatter and State, who was a little down in terms of the uh, record last year, uh, and they've come out and they've not just lit, lit it up this fall, or excuse me, early this spring, um, but they've played some really tough opponents and been hanging in. So I, I think it's going to be a, a really good measure for us where we're sitting in the region. I think it's important for our conference to play these games. And, uh, you know, usually what happens is we go over there and our, our goal for our conference is to, to put down their conference, being a, a you know, the, the uh, other in region conference. And when we do that, it gives us the opportunity to be higher regional ranked. Coach, I want to talk about uh, Caitlin Conley, Lone Star Conference Offensive Player of the Week. She's had a great start to the season. And uh, talk about what has she added this team? Well, uh, Caitlin's more than just the bat, too. I mean, and she can pitch as well. We're just a deep pitching staff. And uh, we've been, she's, you know, had an opportunity to pitch some, play right field some, and DP a lot. Uh, but Caitlin is, she's more than, than just the offensive shot in the arm. She's also a leader on our team. And, you know, being from Stephenville, that's just, you know, that's just an added, you know, that's just icing on the cake for us because, um, you know, she's such a good person in this community and, and a strong student. And people just look at her and they, they see, you know, the epitome of what our players are now. And so she really represents as well. Coach, uh, then uh, 
on the other side of that, Delaney Whalen, Michael Wood, Haley Fryman, uh, newcomers for you. Uh, what uh, potential do you see in them? Well, you know, we, after all of our games, uh, we make a point to circle up and give the Atta girls, you know, the pats on the back, and then we, we also do our fix-its. Uh, we talk about what it is that we have to fix for the next uh, game, what we want to work on the most. And in our Atta girls, you know, those freshmen's names just keep coming up and coming up. And, you know, when you have a Haley Fryman uh, and an Atta Wood who are doing what they're doing, you know, in the, on our battery staff, uh, this young, that, that's really exciting. And they don't act like freshmen out there. And then you've got Delaney Whalen, who's really leaning out on the infield. Um, and while her average, you know, isn't just a phenomenal average right now, her quality of bats are. I mean, she's hitting the ball hard at somebody, and she's producing runs for us. Uh, she's fast. She's got a good arm. And, you know, she doesn't act like a freshman. All, you know, all three of them are out there uh, doing things that, that make them look like they're a junior or senior. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Coach. Safe travels. Good luck this weekend. In thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, when we come back in one minute, it's time to preview the upcoming week in Tarleton Texan basketball. This is the Coach Misty Wilson Radio Show on the Tarleton Sports Network, presented by the North Texas Ford Dealers. Coach, time now for us to run through the Lone Star Conference schedule from the last week. First on uh, Thursday, February 5th, Cameron beat Texas Women 67-65 to at Lawton. On Saturday, West Texas A&M beating Texas A&M Kingsville 81-57 in Canyon. Eastern New Mexico over Angelo State out of Portales 77-69. Midwestern State over Texas A&M Commerce 87-69 in Commerce. And finally, Cameron over Tarleton State 65-62. Uh, and then last night, what a big night it was in the Lone Star Conference last night in Canyon, West Texas A&M over Midwestern State, 59-55. to 55. You mentioned that uh, before the show that you were really looking forward to watching the film in that game. I, I do. I just want to, you know, it was pretty low scoring. And um, I was just curious to see, you know, what both teams did. I always like to you know, pick in <laughs> on other teams. Uh, Coach uh, Cameron, 68-63 winners in Portales over Eastern New Mexico. Texas Women's 55-39 win over Texas A&M in Kingsville in Denton. And finally, your 68-46 win over Angelo State right here in Stephenville. Uh, taking a look at the current Lone Star Conference standings, West Texas A&M at 10 and 1. Cameron is at second at 10 and 2. And coach, if I told you uh, at the beginning of the year that Cameron would be 10 and 2 in the conference at this point in the schedule, you'd think I'm crazy, wouldn't you? Uh, probably just because they had such a slow start, but uh, you know they're they're usually pretty good, and uh, Coach Webb usually plays a tough preseason schedule, and, and that usually helps them. Uh, third in the conference, Midwestern State at 9-3. and three. Tarleton State is now fourth in the Lone Star Conference at 6-6, six and six, tied with Texas Women's at 6-6. Six and six. Texas A&M Commerce is at 5-5. Five and five. Eastern New Mexico is 7th at 4-7. and seven. Angelo State at 8 at 1-10. And, and Texas A&M Kingsville at 9th and with no wins and 11 losses in the conference. Uh, Coach, you uh, hit the road this weekend to take on Texas A&M Kingsville down at the Gulf Coast. Uh, the Havalinas are 0-21 and have lost 22 straight going back to last year. You beat them 67-57 to here earlier in the season. Uh, what was the factor in that game? Um, really, we didn't play very well, actually. Um, we didn't handle, you know, they switched their defenses up a lot. And, you know, we turned it over and kind of let that bother us a little bit. And I felt like we maybe came out a little flat in that game. And um, but the good thing is, is I think they learned a lesson in that game and hopefully won't make the same mistake again. Uh, Coach, I always uh, like to call the Steinke Center the, uh, the ice box in Kingsville. They keep it kind of cold in there. Do you, I'm just out of curiosity, do you have to do anything to prepare your team for the cold? Oh, it is freezing, but it does definitely uh, affect my wardrobe choices. So um, I will be in a jacket even though we're going south. You know, I will be in a jacket. And yeah, I learned my lesson. One year I actually had to wear a sweatshirt on the bench. Oh my so, gosh. Yeah. Down at the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> yes. Unbelievable. Uh, Coach, uh, the uh, game against the Javelinas is started, uh, slated for a 6 p.m. start on Valentine's Day. National Farm Life pregame show begins at 545 from Kingsville. Then next Wednesday, you hit the road again for another long trip to West Texas A&M in Canyon. Uh, when the Lady Buffs came to Stephenville on January 21st, you dropped that game 87 to 86. So, what a great game that was. That, that was a good game, and that one took me a good two days to get over. Um, of course, you can't slow very long because you've got another game coming up. But that one was another one that we really felt like we missed uh, missed good opportunities to, to put that one away. And um, I think we missed 10 free throws that game as well. And uh, so I, I hope our girls will be ready. I, I think that's always going to be a good game. It's been a rivalry for a long time. Uh, and uh, does that, the, the way that you lost the West Texas game, you 
give up a three right at the buzzer to tie it and send it into overtime. Uh, does that give you extra motivation going into that trip? Because you never want to lose games, but does that give you just a little bit extra? Yeah, and you know, as a first year coach, I, I was really doubting and questioning a lot about myself, but uh, you know, when I went back and watched the video, there was actually one thing that made me feel better. And their coach was actually trying to call a timeout. I wish they would have given it to him. He was trying to call a timeout before that girl hit the three. So, um, you know, had we had time to set up our defense and, um, you know, get get back in transition, we would we would have had that game. And um, again, we did a lot of things right. And uh, the good thing is, the girls know that they can play with a team like that. Uh, finally, the, uh, the the trip is going to be the second overnight trip in a row. Uh, what do you have to do to keep your team fresh and to keep them uh, relaxed whenever they've been on the road so much? Well, I think, you know, you have to really kind of scale back practices a little bit. They're, they need to be shorter, probably more intense practices, as opposed to, to you know, two-hour practices or anything like that. You have to, um, you know, make sure that you get some, some shoot-around times in their gym and let them get comfortable. We'll do. We'll try to get a shooter on time Tuesday and then a practice time on Wednesday. We're going to take a one minute break, and whenever we return, we'll have some uh, giveaways for our live audience here at First Financial Bank. So stay tuned. We'll be right back in one minute on the Coach Misty Wilson Radio Show. Welcome back to the Coach Misty Wilson Radio Show from First Financial Bank. Time now for giveaways for our live audience. Before we do that, I'd like to thank Domino's Pizza for providing the pizza for our live audience here today. Our first winner is Dennis Jones. Congratulations, Dennis. Dr. Jones actually taught me when I was in college. Really? Yeah. Everything, everything, everything I know about computers, I learned from you. So Dennis is going to flip the card around. Congratulations, Dennis. You won a, a Tarleton shirt. What a deal. All right. Dr. Jones is very excited about that. Congratulations. Dustin Simmons, our next winner. Congratulations, Dustin. <laughs> Dustin wins a hat. Congratulations. Tarleton State hat. And our final winner, Kyle Hall from the Plowboys. Congratulations, yeah. Kyle. Yeah. See what Kyle has won, flipping over Tarleton basketball card, a pair of first pink. financial bank hats. Pink hat. Go with the pink hat. Unfortunately, no pink cat. Well, thanks to uh, all of our winners here at the Coach Misty Wilson Radio Show. I'd like to remind everyone, the Coach Lawn Reesman Radio Show is on Fridays from 12 to 12.30 at Bruner Motors at the corner of Lillian and the South Loop. You can join Casey Hogan and the 27th year head coach of the Tarleton Texans right there or on 90.5 KTRL and tarletonsports.com slash listen live. From now until February 28th, fans can purchase tickets to the Lone Star Conference Tournament in Allen on March 4th through the 7th. All tournament passes are discounted and if you buy a session pass at the Tarleton Ticket Office, you can get a free Tarleton t-shirt. Uh, you can purchase them in person through uh, February 28th at Wisdom Gym, or you can call 254-968-1832 through February 20th to buy those tickets. Congratulations to Coach Julie Mata and the Texan softball team as the Texans are 6-1 and one on the year, and they're off to Canyon to play six big in-region games against Shadron State, Colorado Mesa, Metro State, Colorado Mines, Colorado State Pueblo, and Adams State. Uh, Coach Brian Conger's 2-2 two two Texan baseball team heads to San Antonio for a three-game series against St. Mary's with a game tomorrow and two on Saturday afternoon. And finally, rounding out a big weekend in uh, Tarleton Athletics, Tarleton Track and Field is in Birmingham, Alabama for the Sanford Elite Invitational hosted by Alabama Burning Birmingham. Again, the next broadcast of Texan basketball is this Saturday, February 11th, in Kingsville against the uh, Texas A&M Kingsville Javelinas. Pre-game from the Steinke Center starts at 5.45 with tip-off coming at 6 p.m. again on February 14th. And, uh, Coach, that's going to do it for our sixth edition of your uh, radio show from First Financial Bank. And we head to the Gulf Coast this weekend. Are we going to go to the beach? I doubt it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know that we've had time because uh, we, we're leaving. We're not leaving until 2.15. We've got a physics test that we had to work around, so kind of get the late start. Raven McGrath is a physics test. Yeah, Raven McGrath. <laughs> Well, I'd like to thank everyone involved with this broadcast of Tarleton Athletics, softball coach Julie Mata for joining us earlier in the show. 
Our producer back at the KTRL studio, Aaron Young, and our on-site engineer, the always famous Jody Lee Cuddle from KWBY Radio. Also, thanks go out to Nathan Burrell and Jeff Smith from the Tarleton Sports Information staff. And most of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for listening and for supporting Tarleton State Athletics. For the first year head coach of the Texans, I'm Kelton Wings, and we will talk to you on Saturday from Kingsville, Texas. Thanks, and have a great day.